Okay, so I'm going to call the the uh, the our uh, Conway Select Board meeting for February 16th to order. We're doing this a day late because yesterday was President's Day. Today's Tuesday. It feels very unusual. Um, and we're recording this meeting. And as usual, the meeting can be viewed on our uh, FCAT uh, video on demand channel, as well as on your video uh, channels of channel uh, 12 or 23 if you have Comcast cable at your house. And the FCAT video on demand channel is you search for FCAT media, one word FCAT media, if you go to YouTube and that'll take you to our channel where you can watch more than you ever wanted to. For all four of our towns, Waitley, Conway, Sunderland, Deerfield, all of our select board meetings and school board meetings and all of it. Um, as, as well as a recent, we've just recently put up the uh, zoning board uh, meeting that dealt with the, the uh, South River project. So that's just recently gone up there, finally, the hearing we had, finally. Okay, so we start off uh, the minutes of last week's meeting. Did everybody get to read, look through those minutes? Yep, yeah. they look good to me? Yeah, that looked good. Okay, so I'll make Make a motion that we approve the minutes of last week, February 8th. Uh, I'll second I, that. Thank you. And, yeah. uh, and we'll all say aye. I hear that unanimously. Yeah. Uh, so now, oh, we have, we have vendor warrants, but Tom, I don't have the numbers for the vendor warrants and we didn't get an updated agenda containing the numbers. Could you read, do you know? My husband's number. Well, yeah, he did say. We do have an updated agenda. I didn't get it. Uh, or I didn't see it. Um, could you, Erica? Could you read the uh, the the vendor warrant amounts? Yeah, vendor warrant um, one twenty four nine thirty two ninety six. Okay. Eight hundred and ninety nine eighty six. And then one twenty four nine thirty two ninety six. And the payroll deduction warrant is twenty seven six twenty eight ninety three. So I'll make a motion that we sign all three of those warrants. Did it, did they look all, everybody look okay? Well, I yep. did have, if you, if you did have a question. Warrants, yeah. Did have a question about the payroll. The, there was an item in the payroll warrant for a winter roads temporary employee for $638. And I, I was just surprised to see something like that in the warrant without ever hearing about anything like that and um, whether we we could we could check with Ron, but you know Ron's down somebody, so uh, I, he might have had to yeah hire somebody. That, that would be plowing. Yeah. It, all right. I mean, we we we, we 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 have gotten away in the past without having to hire contractors, uh, but we are we are down. So uh, uh, he had to hire he had to uh, hire somebody. Okay. I mean, I guess. I mean, normally, when somebody approved, did, does somebody approve of that of the of the salary is of the, the whatever or anything like that? Does that get checked by anybody? Well, we have you, a Winter Roads budget that in, that includes labor, and Ron uses it whenever he needs to. He he hopes not to use it at all, but uh, there is a budget for it, and he uses it when he needs to. Yeah. You know, I don't want to think it's hiring somebody as being like buying more salt, but but he can do that. Labor is a commodity. <laughs> so I'll make a motion that we approve those warrants. Uh, I, get... I second that. Thank you. Yeah. And so we all say aye. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Um, so meetings attended by select board members. Um, <laughs> we'll start with you, Erica. Um, none this past week. Okay. Bill. Yes. Uh, let's see. The select board meeting was Monday. Tuesday was Frontier Regional Budget Committee and then Frontier Regional School Committee voting on the preliminary budget. So I do have preliminary budget numbers for Frontier. Um, Thursday was Conway Budget Committee and then Conway School Committee preliminary budget hearing. So I do have preliminary budget numbers for Conway Grammar as well. And you're still uh, smiling? Uh, yeah. Um, 
and and, and uh, for, for, actually the the frontier the, the frontier numbers are, are re were really good for Conway, but uh, and, and the Conway Grammar School numbers aren't so bad, I suppose. But uh, the uh, and then Friday Friday was a, a telephone conference with some of the FERCOG folks to discuss some of the budget recommendations that I had made at the previous budget hearings, and I'm glad to see that. Um, some 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 changes were made to the process. So um, right. Then then I looked at Tom's plan. I saw that FERCOG budget was for the thing next Monday, and I figured, well, all right, that, that got that got that got that got the juices flowing a little bit. I guess I don't know, but that was good. It's all good. So Phil, can you forward me those uh, preliminary numbers for the schools? Yeah. Um, it, I just I just took down notes because the way that we ended up doing it um, was what you know we I, I wanted to be okay able to I'll, I'll just yeah. yeah I'll get them from Shelley. <laughs> well, we, we we sort of did it with with um with, it's it, it's not going to be higher than kind of budget information to give to you that there's a we're still oh, waiting yeah. On, yeah. we're still waiting on the we're still waiting on the health insurance number and whether there's going to be an increase or not. And if there is a modest increase, it's going to be lower than the amount we have budgeted set aside. So there's a good chance that the numbers will come down from what I say, but they're not going to go up. But How soon will we get them? The, the real yeah, that, that's what I need. All right, re real quick, you want me to give them to you right now? Just bottom line? Uh, no, no, that's all right. No, and right. Bob, we won't get final numbers for another month, right? Okay. Well, that's that's the thing. I was good. Um, the the frontier budget here at public budget hearing where the budget is formally adopted is Monday, March 2nd. Or Tuesday, March 2nd, I guess that is right. Um, and the. Uh, the Conway Grammar School budget hearing adoption is March 18th. I guess that's a Thursday. Great. So, Tom, do you need them before then? I mean, I know you like to fill in the, you know, placeholders. Yes. Yes. I'm. I'm. I'll. I'll write Shelley and 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 get these, and that'll be fine. Not to exceed is is fine for my purposes. Okay, that it, Phil. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, I, I had two short meetings. One we had a um, a conservation commission meeting, and and Tom and I also had a very interesting conversation with a couple engineers from EverSource who were just letting us know about some future projects, and I'll I'll just in, you know briefly. Um, they're going to be replacing many of the tall towers in the uh, clear cut Comcast, uh, I mean, Eversource uh, uh, right away that comes out near Bill Cosby's house, travels across Conway, and goes into uh, Asheville at about Fursick Road. As people know, that is a long swath that goes through Conway. And there's a number of towers there, and they're basically replacing the metal towers that we have now with the gigantic towers that are two, I think it's two very tall poles and a T at the top. But so they'll be, um, and the only reason I wanted to bring that up is that as soon as they start doing that, people are gonna think the pipeline is coming back and, and it, it won't have anything to do with the pipeline. So it's, it's all ever source. And they may be doing some of that clear cutting at the edges of their right of way that they talked about a year ago that they've never done. Um, no, it wasn't that they never did it. It's just that the state shut them down for violating the Endangered Practices uh, Resources Act for clear cutting protected endangered rare. Uh, what the heck was that plant that they cut? Um, we saw in that consent order that got sent in like September. That was really shocking that ever the number of uh, law violations of law that EverSource admitted to. Hmm. Did, okay. did you bring that? Did you bring that up to them? No, I did not. <laughs> no, they just wanted us to know that they're going to be replacing the towers. Because it was the, the land, the construction of the landing in particular, which they put it back up. They, they, 
they had clear cut, I forget how many hundreds of square feet, sweet pea, an yeah, endangered that, native that was, sweet pea. That was a little um, stretch right near Shelburne Falls Road, I think, where they were going to do that work. And, and, and yeah. like they, they, they got permission to, to keep using the landing, even though the landing was the product of, um, you know, and, and which is normally they normally they make them like restore that habitat instead of like prop, you know, benefit from their destruction of it. So I, I would have liked to have asked them about that. <laughs> I bet you would have. <laughs> okay, so those are the two meetings that I had this week. Uh, any public comments? I. I, I I think we have no public that here other than people who are here for today's meeting. Um, okay, so we are old business. So now, so, so our first item of old business on the agenda is we received a request from the United Church of Christ for the, uh, the town to give some money for part of their, uh, to fund part of their construction project. And uh, we've invited Marcus to come in, who's representing the church and the church's engineer. Jake, is that you? Yeah. Hi. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Great. And and, and oh, so they're yeah. going to explain wh why wh why they think the church deserves some money from the town. Can I can can I share can I share my screen? Is there someone that can give me permission to do Tom that? Tom can do that. Yeah. Great, thank you very much. So here's a little presentation. First of all, thank you, thank everybody very much for um, giving the time. Oh, I can't find the present. Oh, present is hidden. Uh, for giving us the time to be able to talk about this and present this to you guys. Um, it's about the the building, and as much as possible, I would like to present this as. I mean, we got we we the church received a historical grant specifically because it was a historical building and um, that was allowed because it was a church. I'm bringing that up only because I really want to focus on the fact that it is a historical foundation that we are still talking about. And that's going to be important in the overall, um, the overall discussion that we're going to have or that we'd like to have. First of all, um, this is the property. The property is bisected by, the, by Waitley Road, and it's on a slope that goes down towards the river, which you see in blue. Everybody's pretty much familiar with that. Um, but the fact that it's on both sides of the road indicates that the road came through the property and um, that at some point an easement had, must have been granted or a, a you know, public domain was issued for that. And that road... Uh, was there. The town of Conway was established, incorporated in 1767. You guys know that. The foundation of the church, of the building, was established in 1841. The second building, after there was a fire there, so there was a second building built on the same foundation in 1887. And Waitley Road was not paved until the 1900s. So the, my point there is that the building foundation predates the paved road. Um, and this is the letter that uh, Jake sent uh, at, to Tom at, and hopefully was distributed to the uh, select board um, yep. outlining some points and, the, and, and saying essentially that the retaining wall as it stands um, is, is not, cannot stand without a building behind it. Um, specifically that if the assembly is left in place over time, the existing foundation wall may retain ro road runoff water and the closed cell spray from previously, previous form uh, spray foam uh, previously applied uh, to this foundation wall interior face will not hold. Um, if there's no building there to trap heat, the freeze thaw cycle will eventually, and I'm not, these are all your uh, uh, comments, Jake. So you, everyone's read that in the letter. Yeah. 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 Uh, yes. What I wanted to show specifically because of comments last week indicating that the road boss had looked at the foundation and said that it was in not in any, the road was in no way uh, jeopardized by the foundation. I would just like to point this out, which is a view from behind the road, um, from behind on the on the property. There's really not a way to see this. The road I've indicated repeatedly in red, and the and just a point of reference of where we're looking at from the inside here. I've indicated in yellow. So, uh, so this is, sorry. Oh man, 
Can't get it to go back. Uh, this um, is. Are, are, you, are you able to? I'm sorry because I'm, I'm I'm having technical issues, so I'm phoning in instead of normally I would be on Zoom. Um, can you share the slideshow with the select board? Email it to Tom or to the rest Absolutely. of us. So Absolutely. Can, okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you can see this is just a, uh, for a point of reference. Um, next. Uh, so, Marcus, in your letter, you talked about there's two separate walls there. One was the interior wall, and then on the road side of that wall, there was a, a stone, well, a, an older stone wall. Yeah, it's on the other side of the concrete. Yeah, so what we're looking at right there is the concrete wall, the poured concrete wall that's on the church side of an older stone wall. Yes, and okay. I, can, no. I can leave that to Jake to speak to, actually. Yeah, yeah, let me just jump in here. So so really my letter, what I was saying is that we've got two different wall types here. We've got the concrete retaining wall that's not really in this photo. That's, you know, a retaining wall that looks like it's been designed as a retaining wall. There it is in the in the background there. Uh, it seems like it's performing fine, right? So that's that's one wall. And you see its location in, in relation to where the road is quite a ways back. Now, what we have in the foreground here is a, uh, you know, uh, a a field stone foundation wall that was originally probably grouted, you know, it was probably like a grouted assembly from the 1800s. So that's not a monolithic pour. And, uh, you know, at some point, you know, in the building's history, the inside got spray foamed, which I think is what you're looking at when you're looking at this photo here is you see some spray foam and paint because uh, that spray phone has to be covered with like an intumescent paint or something. Yeah, I got, uh, I got that. So I got that in another slide. Yeah. So, so my main position here is I'm just saying like, look at, you know, the fact that the wall is uh, originally a foundation wall and, you know, and not designed to retain the road, you know, it was never designed at all, but it just happened to be a foundation wall that was performing as road retaining, you know, when it was a building. Uh, currently, it is not, you know, a building. It's just a stack of rocks that's adjacent to road. And, you know, the thing about roads is, is that, you know, I, I mentioned the freestyle thing uh, in the letter, which is totally applicable. It's got that spray foam on there. I think road runoff and the freestyle, all that stuff is applicable and it'll start to blow apart that wall. But also when you have trucks that are going over the wall, you know, down that road that are like, you know, plow trucks, town trucks, heavy trucks, that sort of stuff, you're going to get vibration. You're going to get some movement. Um, it's not like it's a failure failure type thing that's going to be like, you know, tomorrow, but I can definitely see down the road where something's got to be done. You know, I, I don't think the, the concrete portion is kind of okay, but the where the foundation is, is, you know, maybe not. Yeah. yeah. So Marcus, I didn't want to interrupt your presentation, but maybe when you're done, if we have questions, we could go back to some of these pictures. Is, is that possible? Great. Absolutely. Okay. And, I, and Great. again, I will, I will provide this to you guys. Yeah. Um, but uh, um, just, I guess, so my summary is, and this was just taken the day, day before. I can't go back and forth. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, the building, oh, man. The building foundation predates the road. The property is bisected by the road. So an easement must have been given at some point. And the building foundation supports the road in our, that's what we are, that's what our engineer is telling us very clearly. Um, and without the foundation, without a building foundation being there, without a building being there, the road and the sidewalk will collapse down towards down the hill. Um, and the cost of just, our cost of just the front portion of the foundation, in other words, not the whole foundation, the whole foundation is gonna be about $160,000, $159,000. Just the front portion, our estimate is about 28,000 for just the, the section that's that's going against the road. And so that is why we had put in in our letter a request of help from a 15 K from the road just to support that section and support the road, because that was our contention is something that um, the town has a vested interest in. And that was, you know, that's I I appreciate your time. I my all the questions specifically about the engineering you know he has nothing to do with our, our request for money but he's here to answer questions about the about the, the the engineering and the requirements for that um and that's why that's basically why jake is here 
So thank you very much. Thank you. Did you have anything else you want to add, Jake? No, I don't think so. But if there was anything in particular that you wanted me to address about the project generally or, you know, retaining uh, specifically, uh, my, my strength is more on the building design than the actual retaining design. But, you know, I can speak a little bit to both. So I, I, I so could, Marcus, that, that, that last slide that you, that you had up? Yes, the, I'd be happy to go back to that. The bullet points? Okay, so so th this is really for both of you because um, I, I really tried to get to the bottom of the belief of the of the highway boss, and I, I've actually spoken to the current highway boss and the previous highway boss as well as the police chief, and ab about this be um, because e they've all been on the job for a long time and know this road a lot better than I do, um, and and the, they basically disagree. It, th there's disagreement with. Um, your number three and number four uh, that they, they don't they, they, you know and, and it was very it was just oh that that retaining wall is so far from the road it doesn't matter that is nothing I think to do you, with can, you can literally see it in this picture I mean this it's not that far from the road I mean the snow makes it hard to see which is why I have this one it's not that it's, far from the road if, it's, if it's, it's eight feet it's eight feet from the road as far as I understand it about eight eight six and then the, the drop is on the order of 10 to 12 feet. Yeah, it's way so over my head. That's more than a 45. So, I mean, yeah, I just, I mean, and, and I, I don't know how they could have seen this unless they've been on the property. And as far as I know, no one's been on the property because of our safety gates they put up. So if you guys, if anyone ever wanted to come down there, we'd be happy to let you in to be able to see what, how deep it is it's, it's a huge drop i mean it's, it's like these pictures start to show it this is well this is like two feet over my head if i'm standing against that wall it's it's pretty high so, so it, if, uh, phil can i ask you a question or do you have yeah. another one okay um, uh, no, go ahead so, so, so my understanding is what your letter said was if you build the church there you know, and the, the drawing you sent showed that there's going to be about a maybe a foot or two feet of gravel. Yes. Between the 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 what looks like the retaining wall there, right, kind of near the arrow, and the actual foundation of the the new foundation of the church that you're going to build, and that's going to be filled in with gravel. Yeah, that's then, that's right. The new footprint is set back from the road a little bit farther, mostly from the standpoint. You know, we have to get a foundation in, and it's not going to happen right against the cut. You know, it's not going to happen you know, right against that existing wall. Um, so, so we're gonna, you know, we're gonna move it back a little bit, and then that space in between there, yeah, we fill it up with, you know, some stone that can, you know, take the water runoff and divert it around the structure down to the river below. And, and so, when that happens, yeah, then there's no problem. The the problem yeah. only exists if you decide not to build the church there. It, it, yeah, that's that, that's actually right? correct. That's correct. I, I, I mean, I can just say, I mean, my temptation would be if if you decide not to build a church there, we should talk again. But uh, <laughs> that's wise. Okay, I mean, because I mean, again, I've said this from the beginning. Our intention is to build a church, is to is to put a church there. And uh, all of us really hope you do that. Yeah, no, no I mean, you know, yeah. We just like one of the comments that came out of the last meeting where this where this was discussed was that, you know, what is the town what is it what is the church as a community center done for the town? And that was something I sort of really wanted to speak to also because there's a lot that the that the church, while it exists and while it stood, did for the community and you know, down to graduations that were held at the church when the when the school couldn't. Um, classes which were allowed to, to happen in the church when the school was closed, yep. um, you know, graduations, dinners, um, the you know, talent the, show you, that was held there during the Conway Festival of the Hills every yeah. year. So, I mean, it's, it's, it was just, it was a little bit surprising to hear that comment come out that the town hasn't, that the, that the church hasn't really, uh, tried to do a lot for the town. Um, so th that I wanted to address. I, I don't know. I didn't deal. hear I didn't hear that. I didn't really hear that. I, I would hope nobody said that. Um, but, but I, I would go a lot further than that, Marcus. I mean, the, the church that the church and the town have a two hundred and sixty year relationship. Yeah. It's very been very very tight. 
And I'm acutely aware of the, the need for separation of church and state. I'm not, I'm not suggesting anything other than the front of saying, isn't, is it reasonable for this, again, I said, as a hardware store that was built as a general store and now is, is gone, but the foundation needs to be replaced. Would the town look at someone at aiding that and, and, and helping that foundation for the sake of the road that it is going to save? or not, you know, I mean, I think I, I don't want to get hung up on the fact of, uh, of, of the, the church building as much as the foundational element and the support of the road, which is the angle that we're discussing this from. Um, so it's, it's uh, so not having been able to look at any of the slides, uh, it, but it sounds like, uh, like you perhaps feel like the current highway boss doesn't have the same understanding of the engineering or, or doesn't have the same information that you have i feel very strongly as... about that and i and that's why i mean that's one of the reasons i brought the, an engineer here to talk about it and we can get if, if it's necessary we can get more but i mean the issue is you know i don't i don't know how 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 this type of of angle and this distance from the road cannot be seen as it's structurally supportive of the road um, uh, I, I don't I don't think anybody has been arguing or not me and not yeah. from what I've heard from Ron that you should just leave it exactly like this and walk away and everything will be good forever. Um, so is know, it assuming, mean assuming is it more, it, there, uh, then what happens there? And, and so the issue is mainly if if we don't build it there, then, you know, or if we build it since we're intending to build it there anyway, why should the town do anything? Is, is that what I'm hearing accurately? Uh, I could say, you know, that, that, that there's no need for the town to fund, uh, you know, I mean, what you're telling me is if you build it there, you would not be doing anything special because of the road. Oh, no, we, we would because of the slope that it's built on. If we build it there, we have to build a specific section to hold, I mean, as, as, as Jake was explaining, to hold and allow for the, the rain, off, the rain, the water flow off the road and to, to bypass the building in a way that it didn't have to with the original building that was there. But it's because of the, uh, the new foundation that we're putting, this, putting in there that will allow that. And Jake, I mean, speak to whatever I'm saying incorrectly, because I try to I try to simplify stuff. Oh, I mean, I think you've got a good summation of what's going on here. But I mean, I uh, I don't know. I can't I don't remember exactly if that front wall has a specifically different reinforcing pattern, so to speak, uh, or if it's just a function that it's there and it's retaining soils that's retaining the road. That's a, sort of a, a specific point there that I'm not entirely sure about. But having said that, um, you know, I think if it's not there, you have a problem. Um, you know, I think we all agree with that. Position. Yeah, yeah, no, but to the, uh, yeah, so I'm not sure how I can add more to that than that. Yeah, I mean, um, we at this point, you know, because we are committed to doing this and because of the, the, the way that we're committed to doing this, we are pulling back on where we've been trying to cut corners on every ability that we could to get a building in and get a building up as as soon as possible for the sake of we want to have a building and we want to have a congregation we want to have a place to meet we want to have a community center we want to have a place that the town can use and we're trying to do that sooner than later um but i also felt very strongly that we are adding a benefit to the town specifically by reinforcing by putting a building there and allowing and, and reinforcing this road and, and, and stopping what would be slow erosion if, if the building was not put up in a timely fashion. Well, I mean, we're gonna have to go and sort of run this by our town lawyer again. Um, I mean, you know, as we told you before, we sent him what you sent us an explanation of what's happening and he very explicitly, and I could read you his letter, but said, that we're not permitted to donate money to the church unless it's for some very, very specific reasons, none of which I think are in, would be covered here. I, I thought they were kind of covered here. I mean, to, to me, the issue really was whether it was necessary to support the road or not. Um, 
because the church does serve the public purpose. And I, I don't know whether you're planning on putting a kitchen back in the church, but that was. Um, uh, there'll be there'll be a kind of a kitchen there. It's a much a much smaller scale, I believe. Um, but they'll they'll be much. I mean, it's much less because we only we're only going to have our budget is only going to allow for one story. And I I forget the plans actually. We've we've gone we've we've peeled back and said we well we have to peel back from that and maybe we can look at doing that in the future. Maybe we can peel back from this. So I I'm not even exactly sure exactly where where it stands. So I could be misspeaking. Um, I'm actually kind of taking my final or another pass at the structure over the next couple of days of the latest design iteration. And yeah, I mean you know it's paired back to a point now that oh, hopefully it's like you know going to price out uh, in in a way that's affordable. Uh, functionally, so that's that's. I mean, that's kind of where we're at at, at design. I'm about to take another another crack at it for the next couple of days. And so, I mean, with, with the way we were looking at it was just again use the example of a hardware store that was there before the town was that was there before the road was, and the fact that now, as an act of of weather, an act of God, uh, the building's down and needed to be taken down because it was became structurally unsound because of the tornado that that putting a building there sooner than later is in the town's interest and um that it's not donating money to a church it is uh giving money to support the road and that on that i would i would hang and be able to get you know more um opinions on if necessary um you know expert opinions on that that can speak to that but i don't i don't believe that i mean I, I i find it surprising that only the fact that it's that this is a church in the same location um that that would prevent the town from being able to act in its interest um because again we are making this a community center it is going to be open to the community you know as much as we can get people in there we'd be happy to happy to do that um but you know well that, my understanding from what I understood from, from the lawyer's letter was not that, that it was a church, but that it was just not, that it was basically private property. Um, and that this was, so your engineer said that this was work that has to be done regardless. So you'll be doing this work, whether or not the town contributes money to it. Right. I mean, like we, will be, we will be building the church regardless yeah. of whether the town supports it. But um, the, the bottom line for us is that in building this, we wanted everyone to become aware and be acutely aware that this is a benefit to the town uh, in, no, in every other way aside from the fact that it is a church, the fact that we're putting a building in this location, um, that anyone is putting a building in this location is benefiting the town specifically. Yeah, no, I, no, I, I totally, yeah, I understand that. Um, I mean, I, I didn't feel like, like the lawyer made a distinction between like, you know, a church and any other private property. Um, but I mean, I guess it's, I, I mean, for me, I, you know, like Bob said, that letter was pretty clear from, <laughs> from the attorney. Like we don't have, you know, like, you know, we, we don't have any jurisdiction, you know, like even if we wanted to, like it's not something that we legally can do. I mean, that's, Bob, was that your takeaway? Right. You, you know, the, the, we, we could spend money to repair the Waitley Road if what we were talking about was repairs to the Waitley Road. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's what we're talking about. Well, well sort of. And, and in a way, we sort of are. It, it, you know, I, I, I think that the, the church's position is a, re can, you know, it, it is a reasonable interpretation. But so is yours, Bob. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, but you know it, that, and and that's what votes are for, and that's why you vote on things that that people can reasonably disagree over. Um, but and, you know, as for me, I would suggest that the next step is to get the highway boss behind that fence and take a look at it, um, because if 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 the highway boss says that it's in the town's best interest to support this foundation. Um, that 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 changes things for me. The, the the other thing though that Marcus that you know we are we are a direct democracy. One way to get a, a warrant article. A, 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 an item on, yeah, I just I just I wouldn't want to do something like this, and we can do that. We can we can go that route. the The issue there is I didn't want to do it if we're if if the select board is specifically recommending against it, um, and and that was 
uh, you know, my well, main. Uh, but the issue is uh, th that our town attorney is recommending against it. Uh, <laughs> um, the, 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 the town attorney in that letter, though, did set out a path of, you know, you can make several findings as a select board and then, you know, and then it would be. And, and to me, you know, and, and like for, I, I supported the, the, the church getting the, the um, oh, the CPA it, 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 money. Yes, the yeah, CPA yeah. money. And I actually, when, when I was asked, I, I didn't think the church should have turned that money back to the town. Um, but, the, the, and I said that to everybody I could. Um, but, you know, the, the, be, because, because the, to me, it wasn't for b buying Bibles or for paying, you know, missionaries. It was, it, it, you know, it was for the public purpose of having joint facility, you know, joint facilities, which I myself have enjoyed. I was part of the last function at the church before the tornado, the historical society winter dinner where we had like 50 people in the bottom there and live music and it was great um and there's nowhere else in town that we could do that and um so, so we yes there's, there's a lot of history and we could talk about all the history but you know, as, you know I, we are. I just think so so i yeah i, I um I, you know i think go, go, go to go to see, see if you can get the, the highway boss to take a look at it and address him with new facts and um, we'd be happy to. I mean, it's probably going to need to wait until the snow goes away, which is forever now, because um, we can't I can't I can't move the fence. I tried moving the fence and the snow is basically burying everything now. So I have yeah. to shovel a, a path through, around there. But I'm happy to do that. But and then, you know, I and I, I, I wouldn't be discouraged by any discouraging words from any particular select board member or a vote of the select board. If you believe that it's the right thing to do, you tense 10 signatures of your neighbors and and put it on the warrant and it'll get voted on the because it's the, the town meeting is the legislature. We're just the executives. And, you know, our opinion is advisory in the, in this instance. So. And so um, I guess, I guess, you know, that's. Well, and it would have to be on the to warrant present. anyway, Phil. Yeah. Right? Uh, uh, yeah. It would have to be on the warrant and there'd have to be a logic behind that. And I will, um, we can look at that as well specifically if that's the largest issue is that the the separation i believe that we have a way to address that specifically um but i can't speak to that until i actually get some specific advice um uh because i mean is there is there is is there there is there is as far as you guys know there is an easement for that road going right through the middle of the property right there's a record of that i have no idea i mean yeah. that would be a question maybe to ask the town lawyer as well because that would be on the church's deed. That would be reflected on your deed, which is a publicly, if you type in the address of the church to the register of deeds, that'll come up. If you go, I don't know if, how far back you'd have to go, how many deeds you'd have to go back, but it's on there somewhere. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, just, just wanting to find a way to do this that everybody finds palatable and, not, and, and, and to speak specifically to any resistance um, because we are looking to build the center for the community to be able to use and and make sure that that everyone's aware of that. Um, we're not trying to convert anybody as much as we are trying to provide a space in town that doesn't exist. So thank yeah. you for your time. Thank you, you very much. You, unanimity rarely exists in a democracy. I wouldn't be discouraged by yeah. the, the <laughs> voices. Just do what you think is right by your group. Then ask for what you think is right. Oh, and Tom, uh, Tom, what is your is Tom? Yeah, Tom, what's your email? I can mail it to you. Email the, this presentation to you. Uh, you can email it to select board, all one word at townofconway.com. Okay. All right. I'll have we'll have in fifteen minutes. Great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Jake. Hey, take Thank care. You. Thank you. Good to see you, Marcus. Good to see you, Marcus. Thanks. So we, we could vote on that or not. Do you think we need to, you know, do you want to take a vote? I, 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 you know, I, I mean, Marcus wanted to come in and make sure we understood what's going on. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it seems like they feel like they have different information than Ron does. Um, well, I, I, I would say that, that if they're going to, if they're going to put it on the warrant, then at some point we'll have to decide whether we, you know, support the warrant article or recommend it or don't recommend it. Yeah, and I feel like I would want Ron to weigh in on that before I sure. make a decision. Yeah, yeah. Okay.
Um, Tom, you sent us a, a, a new a new budget schedule. Is it yes. is there changes uh, here, or is it just good to lay it all out? Yeah, no, there there, there are some changes. There's the uh, for next week, the uh, uh, Franklin Regional Council of Governments coming in, and uh, the assessors uh, talking more about their shelving system because uh, that had been a uh, there had been some confusion of what, what they were actually asking for. Um, and I know uh, the capital improvements people are going to be looking at that uh, before, uh, hopefully before next Monday. Um, then, well, I thought that we scheduled a um, joint meeting on Monday. Okay. I, I think we're going to have the capital, I mean, the only capital person will be Tricia who will come because Roy's going to be here and I'm going to be here. So, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I can do that. And um, then uh, then also there's um, there's a, a note about um, that, that this schedule is if there is not a postponement. Um, oh, and, and uh, preliminary budgets coming up in a couple of weeks, which we'll be able to do now that we have, um, you know, draft school numbers. Um, well, actually, we, we do have to get our, our, um, our uh, EQV certified by the state, and I have to, I have to go over um, projected revenue figures with Lee, uh, but I should be able to do that by March 1st. And um, are, are you sure the EQV hasn't been certified? Because that sure looked awful certified in my budget figures from last week. Uh, no. Uh, well, I haven't heard that it has been. I'll put it that way. And and typically, I would I would get a copy of that notification. Um, what we did was we submitted it. So we, we have we have submitted all of the paperwork. Um, did did you see something from the state? Um, the no, I, I was told the numbers that I was looking at were all from the cherry sheets. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pull it up right now. Um, okay, the cherry, the cherry sheet doesn't have anything to do with the EQV. So for the school, the minimum contribution for the school is based on the EQV. Um, hold on. Okay, but it's it. Um, the cherry sheets are also an an estimate. They're, they're not final. So it's all estimated. We don't have final figures um, for a lot of things yet. And as far as I know, one of them is still the EQV. Anyway, once we have that um, and we nail down the, um, the projected um, expenses, we'll have, a, we'll have a much better idea of what the, what the range of possible tax rates is going to be. Um, what, what is the so, postponement you mentioned here? So if we're actually going to postpone town meeting by a month or five or six weeks, then we don't have to, you know, it, it, you know, we're not going to have the discussions in March that we usually have. We'll have them in April um, and everything will be pushed off a month or five weeks or, or whatever you guys decide. So, um, if that's going to happen, um, we should probably um, formalize that, uh, and uh, I can put that on the agenda too. I just wanted to go over. This is what the schedule would look like if you had not postponed. So you know, I think it's still doable from our end, but obviously the schools are going to be looking for you know as much good information as they can get. The later we do it, the better for them. And we already know the other three towns have postponed anyway. So um, the, the, board, the board can do that. And since our election is part of town meeting, and it's defined in our bylaws as being three days after the annual town meeting, the select board on its own can postpone the annual town meeting. And uh, so there, there's no real you know, problem in doing that. Uh, so... Uh, I'd like to put that on the agenda 
um, you know, soon, next week or the week after, to uh, to uh, make sure that everybody knows that that's what we're going to do, so we can get the word out to everybody. And the other three towns have postponed their town meeting to June. Yes. Yeah. Upon the recommendations of the boards of health, um, which is sort of what we're looking at do. I mean. <clears throat> so Tom, if we're going to talk about it, could Carl come in or could we get, you know, it would be good to get their recommendation. Um, sure. I, th I, you know, I think it, we also have the state situation saying, you know, we're not going to have everybody vaccinated by the time we would have the annual town meeting anyway. So the longer we push it off, the more people will be able to be vaccinated. So, um, and, and to, to me also, just the, what Tom was saying about the, the school getting more certainty, um, the later you go there, there's real truth in that, the, 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 what the big decision is what, what the Hampshire group insurance trust is going to do with the rate increase. And I'm, I'm told that last year that didn't come out until June or May. I don't, maybe Tom would know better than I, but, um, there, there are rumors, there are rumors that that might be pretty close to being a le level uh, or, or, you know, pretty close to no increase. And if so, our school budgets have placeholders for that at three and a half percent increase. So that would be a substantial budget savings in both of our school budgets if that if the rumors turn out to be true. But we can't go on rumors. We have to wait till the numbers come out. Well, we know the governor's budget level funds uh, Chapter 70, um, but we, you know, we, the, the, the final state budget isn't made until after town meeting. So um, a lot of this is, you know, going on, you know, just best information. That's all we got. So anyway, those are those are the things I wanted to go over. So I will um, I will ask the Board of Health to uh, consider the issue and make a recommendation. And when they have, I'll bring it back to the select board. Great. Although, you know, it's all coming up in the next couple, only a couple of months away. So uh, three months away. Yeah. Well, I I think they meet weekly as well. So good. Okay. And do you want to go over your draft town meeting warrant? I can say for me. Yeah, there were a few. Go ahead. There were a few items I wanted to bring to your attention uh, on this latest draft, which is it's dated February 10th. Uh, for Article 3, which is the at the top of page 2, um, I had had $60,000 for capital expenses of the Conway Grammar School. This is replacing their boiler. Um, that figure is now up to 66,500. And uh, so that went up 6,500. So in Article 4, to bring the capital stabilization fund back to 250,000, I also raised that by $6,500 to 40,500. Uh, it, or I, I haven't done it yet, but but that that is a change that's going to happen to this draft. That's going to have to happen to this draft. Um, also, on Article Six, I have a placeholder for three hundred and thirty thousand dollars for paving a section of Shelburne Falls Road. Um, I think that was the figure for paving two miles, and um, uh, I think the Capital Improvements Planning Committee is still uh, waiting for a final recommendation on. Uh, Bob, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but they were considering asking that it be reduced to uh, just one mile. That's right. So it would be um, more like 170. And for Article 8, um, that's where, that's the capital improvements article. And so there are two things under that. There's the truck and there's the shelving system for the assessors. And in the future, it would be great if the Capital Improvements Planning Committee, when it made its report to the to the select board, could have it in the form of a warrant article, 
with the different items listed out, the departments are coming from, how much they are. Um, and then also provide um, to the town administrator or and or Lori the motion so that the funding sources uh, were clearly identified. Uh, those, that, that all that work should be done um, uh, pretty early on in order to help the, the budgeting process. And then finally, uh, at the very end, there's some placeholders for amending the protective or zoning bylaws. Uh, the planning board will have anywhere from two to four articles. Uh, one of them that's, that, that they're definitely going to have is a, is a revision to the large-scale solar bylaw. They're also going to be recommending removing the Fournier Town Forest from the solar overlay, which we did when we got the Green Communities Grant. Uh, they might have something on uh, river corridor zoning. That's part of the MVP project they're doing with the FERCOG now. And they might have something on housing. So uh, that's all I know at this point from them. But those, at least those first two articles uh, should be coming um, pretty soon. Uh, they're they're going to be having a uh, hearing on March 24th. And... Uh, so that's when they're going to uh, that's when they're going to do that. Right. So Tom, so, I just want to go back so to that, the very first. Just want to go back to the very first one that you said, which was you said the school, the sixty-six thousand school boiler replacement, and I just wanted to uh, correct you that that's oh, the generator. 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 Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. Sorry. So, in case anybody's listening yeah. at home, still just the generator, not the boiler. So. Um. Yeah, the boiler was earlier. That was last yeah. year, right? Yeah. Shows what an impression it made on me. <laughs> so, so that's uh, that's all I have for the warrant uh, review at this point. Great, thank you. Uh, uh, though, though, also uh, under that is um, is a, uh, a, a any further information. Um, uh, I, I think that the capital improvements planning committee may not have anything to add at this point. Um, I know they're still looking at, if I can speak for them for a moment, um, still still looking at um, the the shelving system, and um, and I and and you can you can clarify with me later, uh, Bob, what the what the if there was a final recommendation for paving and the source of funding we didn't have recommendation and, and and frankly i always thought that that came from you not from us but but yes we would we could provide you with one no we will need a recommendation from the committee for the warrant for for all of the items okay or for for each of the items yeah yeah Okay, we have some new business. So the first one was to sign the agreement uh, for Jason Silverman hanging the South River Meadow. But I think if Jason couldn't come in today, so we're gonna table that for a week or two until he can come in. So we're not gonna- Yeah, we- we were... today. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, uh, he, he's uh, set to come in March 1st. And so Tom did send us all the agreement, uh, and uh, uh, that you know that that he's happy with, and that you know he's asking that we would all sign. So you're not saying it's March first? Yes. Great. Um, the the next on our new business was was an item that that we talked briefly about last week, the Age Friendly Communities Act. Erica, you sent us a uh, form. Could you you want to talk about that? So now yeah, it's officially we, on our agenda. <laughs> yeah, can we table that one as well? Just because of my my travel last week, um, I haven't been able to connect with Noor and um, my technical difficulties as well with sure. my laptop. Well, last week you so, said there wasn't a hurry on that. So yeah, and there's yeah, it's not um, it's not urgent at this point. I think I mean they're still trying to they're still scheduling meetings with select boards in Franklin County. I think they've met with about 
half of them and have support from half, but there's still the other half that they haven't even met with yet. So it's not urgent. And I think that one can wait. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, when we talked about it last week, I think we had all read the, the, the note you sent out and we all sounded like we were pretty comfortable with it. If we want to go ahead. Yeah. And, I, I, and, you know, sign yeah, the you, 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 you might, you might as well uh, vote on it. Yeah. You, you know, okay. You know, I, I don't know about you, Phil, but uh, yeah, it, 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 you said that it's it's not asking anything of us other than our support, which we all felt right. good about. It just gives, yeah, it just gives basically their project standing to apply um, to be part of the AARP member network. So, uh, um, so I'm uh, yeah, I'm I'm also I'm fine tabling it. I'm also fine making a motion that we. Um, uh, you know, edit that letter and sign it, um, the letter of support for LifePath to proceed with their grant application. I'll second your motion. Okay. I'll vote aye. I see Phil aye. nodding and I assume it's okay. Yep. So let's, yep. let's assume that's passed and we won't postpone it anymore. <clears throat> Good to get it done. Okay, great. Thank you. And so the next one is to start talking about uh, the transition of finding somebody to replace Tom. Uh, I think we're calling it the transition. But, uh, and Tom, Tom and I talked, you know, about this a little bit, and he did send out um, kind of a some proposed thoughts on how to do a search, which I would love it if we could get started on this sooner rather than later. And then he also more for our own interest and and Erica for you to read through to get a, the gist of it. But he sent out his job responsibilities for the job that that, that he's doing as town administrator. So what I'm hoping is we can decide whether we want to hire an interim uh, between now and perhaps around town meeting, somebody to get us through town meeting, and then in that time trying to hire. Um, uh, you know, the final candidate, or if we should just trying, try to hire the final candidate right away. What do you think? Well, how, how long would this, I mean, like the interim period is pretty, is pretty short, right? But like the window well, we're looking at? Depends on when town meeting is, but town meeting might be in, might be in June, might be in April. You know, it's between, and Tom would be leaving in about, yeah. let's say, two months. But we would want to have, you know, somebody in place before then. Yeah, and I'll point out, um, I list it as a, as a disadvantage um, to the shorter term that uh, um, you wouldn't probably get as large a field of candidates as if you spent some time advertising and, and, uh, and and had you know a, a broader search and um, you know word of mouth had time to get around and all that sort of thing. Uh, but there there's um, the 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 benefit to doing it shorter is um, that you you can get things done right away and somebody can be on board right away and you don't have to worry about it anymore. Well, to me, the advantage of the shorter term one is somebody would come on board and then overlap with you directly, as opposed to overlap with the interim person. Excellent. Um, I, 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 I kind of like the interim idea myself, more so than proceeding straight to go. Um, Especially because some of the names on that interim were, um, were, were just were individuals that I know to be strong candidates. So, you've seen the list of names. It it was in the same thing that you're reading. Tom sent it. Tom sent the on the agenda. It was on the agenda, wasn't it? The the first one that he prepared last week. Did it? Include yeah. The um the email the email I sent out. Oh, maybe yeah. I. I, I Okay, I didn't. See yeah, that. I mean, there were some really strong names on that, and um, and and I I, th I thought the arguments in favor of 
taking your time to get the best person were stronger than the arguments in favor of the advantages of getting a quick person. No, I'm agree. I agree with you. Uh, 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 I like the idea of of being able to take our time and figure out what we want to do. And um, in fact, so I, I can prepare. Ahead. Yeah, I, I I can prepare a notice and get it out if if you want me to do that. So it sounds like now, if, I, uh, if, all that said, um, I'm probably not going to finalize with Dalton until um, Monday or Tuesday next week. So it not, nothing's really official until then. Yeah. Then don't send it out until then. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but, but I can prepare it. I, sure. I can prepare it. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Erica, what do you think? Well, I just... I'm, I'm kind of curious about the history of the position because, Tom, you're the first full-time town administrator that we've had, right? Uh, I wish that were the case. Uh, no, yeah. The, 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 staff, the, the staff, two before staff, me staff. served for two months apiece. Okay, yes. oh, right, okay. And um, before, and before that, that, we had a half-time person. Yeah, so, so when did we first have a full-time town administrator? Yeah, uh, it was it was the 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 very end of 2012 into the beginning of 2013 for about two months, and then another person served for about two months, um, and then there was a, a longer process, and I came in in uh, in August of 2013. That is, that so prior is, to 2012, we only had it. We had a part-time town administrator. That's right. Um, and was that a was that a town meeting decision to, to bring it to a full-time position? That's a good question. I don't know. Yes, it was. I, I, I well recall. I well recall. And, and you know, and, and, and this is what, I, what I've spoken about in, in, in the past, that, that, um, that the town, at, at town meeting, the, the, the premise was made that, you know, the, it was the, the the pitch for changing our government, our town government, to this was based on um, th things that were said that didn't really pan out to be true, and you know, and and so that that's why I had advocated for town meeting, like sort of reaffirming that this is what they want to do, um, because I think the votes are there personally, but um, I, but I, I think that uh, that that it would be a good thing. And just to say, this is how the position has changed since it was first envisioned. And just to keep faith with people to point out that, you know, um, this is this is how it is now. And let's and this is our recommendation and and uh, get get sort of a stronger foundation of public acceptance behind um, the successor, because one of the things that has always been true to everybody, it, you know, it, is that the numerous people that have gone right up to Tom throughout his stay here and said, uh, you know, I don't think Conway needs a town administrator and things like that. And just so. Um, I think most of those people don't know everything involved in running the town. But, and, but that's why it's good to periodically refresh the well of permission. And, um, uh, you know, I, I might be in a minority, but, uh, you know, that, that the, uh, you know, nonetheless, I do favor going with the interim right now and and, and sorting through this stuff. But so I saw I saw we had a requested comment. Did you see that, Bob? No. Where was uh, that? It, it, tr tr uh, tr tr Trisha said that she has a comment. It flashed uh, up. Uh, then oh, she'll oh, have to oh, unmute. So yeah, I know I know that I know that Trisha was planning on being here. So hi, Trisha. Hi, how are you guys? Hi, Erica. Great. Hey. Folks, Hi. I should say folks. Um, I just don't want to say that the market is getting pretty competitive for town administrators. A lot of folks are retiring, I think, just after 13 months of the pandemic. So I agree with Phil and I, I don't, I think Bob and Erica, the sentiment of the board that you probably want to get an interim and take the time to do a thorough search and get the most qualified person. Bob's right that most people probably have no clue as to what a town administrator does, but 
I think it's more important than ever to have a good qualified person and do a search so you can get a really good person in there and take the time you need to do it. And it's going to take longer than a couple of months because if you do get a good person that you want, they're going to, like Tom, have an employment agreement and have to give a long notice period. So you're going to be without someone for a while and you're coming into the critical budget season and town meeting and the beginning of a new fiscal year and riding out the rest of this pandemic. So I, I fully agree with your sentiments, but I don't think you want to bring this discussion to the floor to reiterate the need for the position. I think you want to get, like Phil said, I don't see the list that you he might have seen or the select board, but to get a qualified interim in, there's lots of retired managers that are doing interim work now and carry on, you know, work with Tom for a while and do a nice thorough professional search that you're capable of doing. Thank you. I agree. So, uh, Trisha, since you're on, can I ask you a couple of questions? Because th there's a couple of beliefs that I have, and I just wanted to double check with you about this to confirm that they're grounded in reality. Um, so, be belief, belief, be belief number one that the, the best time to be looking for this position is sort of the July, August that that there is a musical chair sort of with this profession that that's, that that you're going to get the strongest field of candidates. I mean, there's vacancies all during the year. There's a half dozen right now. Um, in Massachusetts, um, there's no portability with the pension. So what essentially that means is because you have to work in the system 10 years before they're vested, you don't get out of state candidates. So what happens is musical chairs occur. So when there's a vacancy in one municipal position in Massachusetts, it creates a rolling cycle so that one manager gets a job in another community that opens up and it goes to another manager in another Massachusetts community and they roll from community to community and that happens all year long. So there's no ideal time. A good manager will uh, typically leave as Tom is once your budget is set for the fiscal year. So the worst thing to do is to leave in March or February or you know January, just at the beginning of the budget cycle and have a brand new manager come in, knows nothing about the community and has to suddenly do a budget. So Tom's leaving you in good hands, is giving you a budget that if it's not 100% complete, is almost complete. And then the new manager, the new administrator has a whole year to get to know the town. And when he has to start formulating the budget in December or January, he's had a, a good long time to get his feet wet. So, but there's no magic bullet as to when folks move, they move 12 months during the year. And there's a lot of vacancies right now. So you wanna be aware of that when you're going out. South Hadley's open, Munson's open. Um, Hobbitston's looking for a one year person because their town administrator has been called up for a deployment. That's just in the last two weeks. So there's always vacancies. Okay. Um, the uh, uh, assumption or belief number two that the that um, ha having an interim for a few months um, that is a well-known interim and th that that would actually assist us in the the search for a full time in, in that that would be sort of another source of credible recommendation that for prospective full time you know full timers down the road would would seek out that rather than just a, sort of like one former. Uh, town administrator, you could be talking to two about how good of a town this is to work for, or whatever. Would that, did I, was that terribly incoherent that you couldn't understand what I meant? Sorry. No, I think I get the gist right. of it. Um, so that's really the select board's call. So some interims can be very involved in the search. Others may choose to refrain from them altogether. It could be your call as to when you interview interim candidates as to querying them as to whether or not they're comfortable being involved in the search or not. Chances are they're going to be familiar with a lot of the candidates that will apply for the position. Most communities, not necessarily in Western Mass, although increasingly hire a search firm to do their town administrator search. But I would say it's a mixed bag. The interim can do a lot of the administrative work and be involved in the search, 
or they can be totally withdrawn from the search. It's totally your call, but it's something that you'd really want to decide before you start to interview candidates for interim as far as asking them whether or not they're comfortable being involved in the search and weighing in on the candidates. And I'd be happy to assist as well if you want. Thank but you. again, just in the initial screening process, not in terms of finalists. I can only go to a certain point. Right. Right. Because um, I, 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 you know, the, some of the names in the interim list, I have personal, ex very favorable experience with. So, and I, I kind of actually was excited when I saw some of those names. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And well, some of the, I mean, and, that's, and that's, the I'm not sure they're all available. Right. Yeah. And that's the first question you want to decide as a select board. Do, because this is an important choice that some select boards um, disagree on and is, do you want someone who's your interim not to be a candidate for the permanent position? Or do you want that person, when you interview them, to consider applying for the permanent position? Because some select boards take very definite positions on them. Because you may love the interim and hope they slide in and become a candidate for the permanent. Other communities want to have a uh, you know, a firewall between the interim and yeah. who hire as the permanent. So you have some decisions to make around that. How have you seen that gone in the past? I've seen it lots of different ways. I mean, the for me, if you hire an interim and you love them and they're interested in applying for the per permanent position, then that makes your transition all the more seamless. The flip side is, is that if you get a retired administrator who's serving as an interim, you're getting a world of experience and you have nothing to worry about in terms of your community being in really solid hands and really moving the community along and forward and you know working with that new appointee until they're really ready to cut the cord and start. So there's advantages to both. And they would take that job you know, being very explicit, this is an interim only position. You the, can make that decision. You can say the interim's eligible to apply for the permanent or, you know, the interim, we are not going to consider the interim as part of the permanent administrator. Yeah. But as Tom mentioned, some of the candidates may not be interested in the interim. There's lots of retired managers um, who, who just this year they want to work three days a week as part of their retirement and um you know and they're terrific they're terrific but on the flip side there's other people who you know want to get their feet wet and get a foot in the door to the permanent i've seen it both ways and i'm sure tom has too did you have another assumption phil well no actually she just covered it that, that the 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 nature of the retired uh, interim versus you know versus the 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 one looking because my understanding is at least one of the names on the list that, of interim is someone who has very publicly said that um, in prior interim gigs that they are retired and that this is not the the long term for them that there's other things that the person is doing in this field that preclude them from being the full time permanent town administrator for your town. But as an interim, uh, I've just, you know, I just all my prior experiences with the person just knocked my socks off and taught me a lot and taught me a lot. And so I would just, you know, I, that that's kind of um, what I what I feel real. That's my comfort zone right now, just because I know it. Yeah. Um, yeah so, and and uh, they can still help you even not being directly involved in the search, they can get a feel for the community while they're interim and say, this is the particular skill set I think you need. You know, your town's really strong on needing somebody in finance, or your town's really strong on needing somebody on 
facilities management. You know, they can get a feel to help guide you as you well know too what your town needs. And, you know, managers are jack of all trades and, and ma masters of none, but they have stronger suits in some things than other. And that can help dovetail what you're looking for when you start to interview permanent candidates. So Trisha, Trisha I'd, I'd like to be able to um, check in with you uh, and uh, get your advice over the next week as I, as I try to put something together for the board, if, if you'd be willing to do that. Yeah, so Tom, what you really should be doing for the select board right now is looking at your job description and updating it, because I'm sure there's been lots of things that you've done and added to the job description that weren't reflected the last time this position was advertised. So that's what you want to make sure you do is really have an up to date job description that's reflecting all your current duties and responsibilities. Okay, thanks. I thought I thought that the one that you sent out that had been revised just a couple of years ago, I thought that was pretty, pretty exhaustive sounding to me. Um, maybe Tricia would be able to give much more specific <laughs> feedback than that. But uh, um, I, I don't know. Just, I, it, it looked yeah, it was it was more it was more than a couple of years ago. It was just like five, five years ago anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I'll I'll certainly give that a once over. But I'm you know I'm thinking in terms of the process and advertising and and getting the word out. So uh, yeah, I'll, maybe I'll, maybe I'll give you a call later uh, in the week. Yeah. <laughs> After I visit the vault at town hall, right, Bob? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to see the space where the shelving's going to go? So uh, you know. Erica, again, you know, I mean, I, you know, Phil has been pretty explicit of his view, and I'm just wondering, you know, are you on board for or for saying that we want to go for it, it um, uh, and uh, uh, just a, a temporary, uh, an interim town manager? Yeah, I definitely support the idea of an interim, and I, I mean, I think if ever there was a time to reevaluate the position itself, um, which I feel like, you know whether you know whether we decide for or against but like phil said i mean it's just a good you know yeah. good faith thing to put out there and remind people of the value of the work that's done um so i think if ever there was a time to reevaluate the position it would be now and so it would be um better to have an interim in that position because you know without knowing necessarily whether we're going to hire a full-time manager or part-time or whether you know what decisions people of the town want to make in that regard. So I fully support um, hiring an interim position. And then the other decision that we just talked about was whether we would want to be be clear on whether whoever we hire would be able to apply for the full time position. Yeah, I have. I, I mean, to me, I don't have any problem with that. I mean, I feel like if anything, we, we would, you know, I might look more favorably upon someone who came in on an interim basis and said, yeah, I actually, you know, want to continue doing this. So I don't have a problem with um, with keeping the position open to whoever is hired as an interim. I, as right. I, could I, just would... add, I can't imagine the town would want to go backwards and not want a full time town administration town administrator, um, given what we've all lived to for the past year and the value of that work that's been proved over and over again. Um, oh, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I agree. But I but I but I feel like, you know, if like now would be a good time to have those discussions and to reaffirm you know the commitment to you know this work and the value that that someone brings to this position i would say that already exists by the funding of it every year at town meeting for the last 15 years but that's just my opinion as a resident of the town and someone who spent the last 35 years doing this and doing it in communities all around us that's had the position for 30 years so but i'll be quiet now no, don't ever be quiet. It's, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> good. Good. Um, uh, Tricia, should we be clear in in the notice that we put out looking for someone about this issue of we're looking for an interim, but we're open to that 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 person could you know could apply for the full time position, or is that not necessary? You, you know, would that be something they talk about in the interview? Yeah, you talk about it in the interview. Yeah. Okay. You draw when you drop the questions you want to ask the candidates. That's just something that you draw it ask in the interview. Okay. Who knows? You might change your mind, but but you don't have to put that in the advertisement. 
Okay, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean I, 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 I'm, I'm also just, you know, I just want to also make sure that the people that don't that that don't want to be a full time are, but who have excellence to offer as an interim are also open. You know, that we also make that attractive to them as well. Yeah, so, I agree. I agree because that's probably what you're going to get. You're not going to get someone full time. You're yeah. going to get someone who will want to be in the office, you know, a few days, but everybody's working remote. Now I know Munson is hiring an interim tonight. They're open to that person sliding in full time and they're gonna be working uh, three days in the office and, but there's also the option for remote work. And that, would that be something to put in the advertisement? How many days a week we'd be looking for? Yeah. Again, yeah, I think that that's important, but I would also, I always sort of do safety net with all that stuff and say, you know, open for negotiation. Because mm -hmm. if you have someone you really like, you don't want to have a non start you don't want to have it so rigid with non starters that you like three days here, blah, 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 you know, can't do this, can't, you want to make sure you, you have it flexible enough so you can get the person you want. Yeah. Okay, so Tom, you're going to draw that up. Yes. Thank you. So are we done for this for now? Great. I think so. I think so. So items not anticipated. Do we have any? Yeah, the, the COVID vaccine no. clinic. Deerfield, we got, a, we got a COVID vaccine clinic to let everybody know if they haven't heard about happening this Thursday and Friday in Deerfield, 500 doses available to Conway residents. Um, Who you, are you 75 and over. Or, 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 in, or in an otherwise eligible category. Um, so uh, can we call that an announcement? I guess so. Because I don't think there's any deliberation necessary for that. All right, you're right. Yeah. Okay, how about mail? I have uh, nothing here. So now you can make your announcement, Phil. Yeah. The <laughs> clinic is Thursday and Friday from 9.30 till 2.30 at the former uh, Channing Bet. Now it's the Treehouse Brew Pub or whatever um, in Deerfield. And um, you have to pre-register on the, the, just look at, you know, just, just try to, but the, the links come up right on Google when you type it in. But, um, and there's even, uh, if there's a if there is a wait list, they're keep, they're doing a wait list because there's extra doses in the vials at the end of the thing or whatever. Mm. They want to be able to, you know. So I, I knew that as of as of yesterday, there was still there was still room for both days. But, Tom, um, can we announce that in our town website? It already is, I think. Yeah, it it, it it's up. It's up. Great. I I do have an update. Um, yeah, but we Forgot skipped that. right over that, I guess. So <laughs> let's, let's do that. Yeah. Um, uh, we have received the annual contract for the cultural council funds, uh, which amount to uh, $4,800. I have it in the town office for Bob to sign. If the select board wants to vote on accepting it that's good and i can put it on next week's agenda but unless i hear any objections i'll just leave it out for bob to sign and get it out to the state and um okay based on current spending um the newsletter committee is now expected to spend at least fifty five hundred dollars in fy 22 up from five thousand dollars uh, and without objection, I'll adjust the budget to reflect that. Um, the Board of Health sent postcards to all residents over 75 last Friday, letting them know of this week's vaccination schedule in Deerfield, which you heard about from Phil. And uh, registration links are on our website. And the Planning Board will hold a hearing on changing the protective zoning bylaws 
Oh, this is a fifth possible article. Oh, which, which is actually in, in the draft warrant I sent out. Um, uh, the, the hearing to replace selectmen with select board, probably March 24th, to mirror the proposed change in the general bylaws. The planning bylaws take a hearing, and then the planning board can put it on the agenda. So we actually need both of those. And uh, just finally, um, for departmental news, um, I have drafted a request for proposals for the carbon credit study, and Phil is reviewing it. Um, we also sent it out to some other people and got no comment so far. We're hoping to get it out soon, as there's a lot of work for the time left in the year. So that's ready to move forward. Great. I, that's the, Tom, the, the carbon credit thing, I did get feedback that that's, that that's perfect for our needs and that we should, we should go forward with it. Um, oh, good. Um, and, and, uh, what was the other thing, oh, the, the select man to select board. I had always assumed that select board would be one word. I was surprised to see it separated oh. into two words, thus necessitating everybody to always hit the space key. Um, which is just one more key, one more fraction of a second taken from us. Uh, so I don't know. I I, I like select board. Well, as I, I was. <laughs> I like select board I, as one word. I, I, I had been uh, I had been mirroring uh, the planning board, uh, um, board of assessors. It's a it's a board. Uh, I it, uh, your, it's a very picky. Uh, that 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 is a choice that that is up to the select board. <laughs> so, Phil, so, so I'm with you. I like select board one word, but my spell checker always corrects it into two words when okay. I type select board. You can. Tell I prefer your... one word myself too, and you can train your spell checker. <laughs> I know I can, but <laughs> you're right. So. So Tom, we're all righty then. Sounds unanimous. You're in you, unanimity. Unanimity, yeah. <laughs> well, you know that that's the way I did it in Northfield before I came to Conway, and then in Conway, the when I got here, it was uh, the the two words was more more prevalent. So is that it for your update? Yes, it is. Great, thank you. Uh, any select board comments? Concerns? Yes. So we already said there's no mail. We we talked about announcements. I had two um, two announcements that I just wanted to t to mention. Uh, one was that uh, I think regularly we ought to in our announcements we ought to talk about the Germain Fund and the fact that the applications are available on the town website and they're due on April 16th. So I just, you know, I think that'll, that it's difficult for people who may not know about the Germain Fund, they can read about it on our town website, uh, that we, you have to fill out an application and, and uh, it's, it's, it's easy money for residents of Conway, <laughs> frankly. Um, the, the select board, it's, it's, it's the most enjoyable time the select board does is get to hand out money to the, to the <laughs> interests of Conway. So I w just wanted to, uh, to make an announcement that the application is, is on the town website. You can read about it. And the other one, the other announcement I wanted to make was that I just got what I think is a really terrible email that purported to come from Comcast, and it was asking me to log in and perform some kind of an update or Lord knows what it wanted me to do. And it was clearly a great example of what's called a phishing email. And if you log into that where it asks you, all it's really gonna do is it's gonna keep track of your login information to your Comcast account and the person who sent you that email is going to do something with it. And so I just want people, and, and if I got it to, you know, I got it actually sent to my town of Conway account, but it's somebody who's looking for Comcast information and they could be sending it to anyone in town that has a Comcast account. So mm -hmm. just, 
<laughs> you, you know, I don't mind getting letters from Nigerian princes who want to give me money, but, you know, they're so ridiculous. But this one was was better done than most of them with very official looking Comcast logos. And uh, I'm afraid somebody could easily think it actually was from Comcast. So it just felt like a good opportunity here in our select board announcements to talk about that. Uh, anything else? Then our next meeting is February 22nd. At six o'clock, it's going to be back on a Monday, six days from now. Good. So I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Very good. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. See you all next Monday.